Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Cherry Brook All About Combs and Scissors webinar. Um, I'm happy to have you with us today, and I'm just going to give us one minute for everybody to jump on live, and then we are going to get to it. So welcome. If you are tuning in, you are at the right place for the Cherry Brook All About Combs and Scissors webinar. So welcome. I'm just waiting for people to jump on the live and then we are going to hop to it. All right. It is now 201. So this is the Cherry Brook All About Combs and Scissors webinar. I am your facilitator, Allison, and I am from Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. And if you haven't been on one of my webinars before, you don't know who I am. Um, I was a professional handler for 32 years in North America, and I have won more than 550 best in shows on dogs from every single uh, Canadian and American Kennel Club group. Um, I have won at Crufts. I have won at the World Dog Show. I've shown my dogs all over the world, including Amsterdam, Mexico City, uh, Russia, Finland. So um, the, what I'm going to talk to you about today, if you talk to, you know, 10 different people, you're going to get 20 different answers. And I completely understand that, but I just want to bring you a way, a system, a tip, a trick that I have used before and proper ways to use combs and scissors. Um, and I can back up what I tell you by my experience in purebred dogs. So with that little introduction in mind, let's get started. Um, so I just have to find our little share screen here. And here we go. So if at any time during today's presentation you have a question for me, please enter it into the Q&A function. So if you kind of float your mouse around, a little bar will come up, punch it into the Q&A. I encourage you to do that throughout the webinar because everybody seems to pile them in at the end and then, you know, th modern technology is a great thing, but um, depending on the lag in connection, <clears throat> your question may not get answered because it may not get to us before we end. So at any time you have a question, pop it into the Q&A. Please do not use the chat function as um, those messages get lost. We can't always find them. We're not really sure why. And so now we just don't even really pay attention to it. So you have to pop it into the Q&A. And then at the end, we are going to get to it. So um, if you have been on some of our other webinars, today's format is going to be a little bit different because what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through the tutorial that is these slides. And at the end of the tutorial, I am then going to demonstrate. So during the tutorial, I'm going to say there'll be a demonstration on that. And I will demonstrate the technique after the slide tutorial and before the live Q&A. So you will have lots of time to see the demonstration. If you see me taking a sip of water, a sip of tea, or putting some lip chap on, it's because um, there's a lot of hot lights in here and I have to talk for an hour. Uh, not because I'm trying to be rude, just because I'm trying to keep my throat and my lips working away. So here we go. Combing and scissoring by me, uh, sponsored by the lovely, lovely people at Cherry Brook. Cannot thank them enough for continuing to bring this kind of education for free to their customers. So today's agenda. Um, before you can start scissoring properly, you need to know the comb out. So I'm going to demonstrate the comb out. Um, I'm going to talk to you about different Chris Christensen combs. Then we're going to move on to scissors. We're going to talk about scissor edges because a lot of people don't understand the difference between beveled and convex. Does not matter? Why are some more expensive? How do I get them sharpened, etc. So we're going to go over that. We're going to talk about different scissor types and when you should use them, scissor maintenance, and then how to properly hold your scissors. So I am going to demonstrate how the comb out and I'm going to demonstrate um, what to do if you drop your scissors on the ground, which um, can be a little bit devastating for those of you that have done it, and how to properly hold your the different scissor types. I am also, because I had a lot of questions emailed to me um, about a method I call the barbershop method. Um, I don't have the appropriate breed to show you that today, but I'm going to try it on a model dog just so you get the technique, and that's more for like our sporting dogs that need those blending between where you thinning shear and the rest of their coat. Um, and then I'm going to do a little demo on holding your scissors, uh, trimming a poodle for a little bit. So there, that's what we're going to do today. Um, and then there is going to be a special offer just for you from Cherry Brook 
on some of the products that we are going to talk about today um, that is exclusively for you. So hang on for that. So like I said, unless you comb your dog out properly, it doesn't matter how much money you spend on scissors. Um, scissors, your scissoring job, you can have a, a very inexpensive pair of scissors. And if the comb out and the base of your dog, the bath, the dry, the foundation grooming is really great, you can get a really good job with almost any pair of scissors. Um, and like a more expensive pair of scissors might not necessarily do a good job. Well, they'll do a good job, but you aren't providing them the base, the foundation for which they can do that job. So it all starts with the comb out. Really, it all starts with the bath, the dry, and then the comb out. But if you've been on some of our other webinars brought to you by Cherry Brook, we have already talked about the bath and the dry, and there's only so much we can do in an hour. So when we talk about the comb out, uh, you, are, you never brush or comb dry hair. Uh, if you're combing dry hair, you're creating static. Static causes damage to the coat and also the coat isn't going to lay in an organized manner. And we need it to lay consistently in an organized manner for you to get the finished look in your scissoring. So what I mean by that is once you learn how to properly line brush and comb your dog out, you're going to do it the same way every time. And that way your scissoring will get better and better. If you're brushing all the hair down, one time and scissoring it and then brushing it all up the next time and scissoring it, you're not going to get any consistency in your scissoring. So a lot of people think it's all about the scissors and you know the scissors definitely do help but it is also all about the comb out. So I am going to demonstrate this but in brief you're going to take your big G which is my favorite slicker and start as far down your dog's underside as you can making small horizontal lines across your dog. So it's called line brushing and you're, that means you're brushing the coat line by line. And once the, the hair is brushed with a slicker, then you need to comb that layer through. And you can start with a wide tooth comb and then move on to a fine tooth comb. You can start with the wider end of a comb that has two different teeth, um, you know, coarse and fine teeth on it. Um, and by the time you get to the fine tooth side or the fine tooth comb, the comb should slip through there like butter. If it's getting snagged at all, then you have to keep brushing and combing. And you always want to brush down the new line of hair or layer of hair that you are about to brush and comb onto the previously combed line. You don't wanna be brushing the hair onto the unbrushed hair because it, you're, it's never gonna slide through like butter because a comb is gonna catch that unbrushed hair underneath it. And it's kind of a clumbersome way to explain it, but once we demonstrate it, I'm pretty sure you're gonna get it. So we're just gonna quickly go through what combs are available through Chris Christensen. Um, Remember that Chris Christensen combs, the ends of them have round ground tines. And this might not sound important to you, but it's important to your dog because the round ground is what makes them soft, which makes them non-scratch. So if your dog hasn't liked brushing or combing before, part of the problem could be that the brushes and combs that you were using did not have round ground pins or tines. That is very important. If you have a comb or a brush, at home and it's not Chris Christensen and you're wondering if it is, run it on your arm. If it scratches your arm, it's going to scratch your dog. And this is a big reason why a lot of dogs and cats don't like to be groomed. And sometimes even though you switch to a Chris Christensen brush or comb, the dog still has that memory of last time this didn't feel so great. And maybe you need to start um, even with our wooden pin brush, which is super soft just to get them used to it. So going through the combs here, um, starting from the left, the 000 is when I started in dogs some 30 odd years ago, actually I started longer than that. I started 45 years ago, even though I look much younger. When I started in dogs and I was seven, I couldn't wait to get a Greyhound comb. A Greyhound comb was the only real metal comb that was available on the market. And this is exactly what it looked like. It was a seven and a half inch comb. It had the, the coarser side was about this wide apart. And then the finer side was about this wide apart. It was the holy grail of combs. And to me still is the best all round general. You can do anything with it. If you only ever wanted to buy one comb or you've never bought a good comb before and you want one, this is the holy grail. This is the beginning. So then the 001, um, is basically just the fine side of the 000 all the way down the seven and a half inches. The 003 has the same fine edge and then the coarser side is a little bit wider apart. 
Um, and this is useful for some people that maybe aren't doing a lot of scissoring. So this wouldn't be the comb that I would recommend for scissoring. Uh, the 005 is similar to the 000, only the tines are a bit longer. Some people prefer this. And then the 00X is a wonderful, wonderful finishing comb. If, you, if you're if you really picky about your scissoring, you're more advanced scissor. This is a great, great comb because it's similar to the 000, except everything is a little finer together and really gets that comb out. It also makes the comb out more difficult because you have to be really on your game to have it work. So these are the combs. I love, I love all of these combs. I've used them all. The 000 would be where I would start. If you're really picky, you're going for something more advanced, the 00X is what I would maybe try. So then we move on to different poodle combs. So poodle combs tend to be longer than our seven and a half inch combs. They're usually nine inches. And the 000, or sorry, the 004 was basically um, just like the first poodle comb that was ever on the market. We call them poodle combs because they're great for lifting up those big top knots and getting them sprayed up. But realistically, they are great for dogs with longer hair, dogs with profuse hair, because your hand isn't on the comb getting into the hair, knocking the hair down that you're trying to comb. Um, the tines are a little bit wider apart. They are great for Samoids, um, Bernie's Mountain Dogs, Alaskan Malamute tails. Like they are great for that big, huge black Russians, that big, huge coat that you're trying to get out and get fluffy. I love poodle combs. And remember, we can still scissor those breeds, right? Um, and then the 015 is similar to the poodle comb. Um, it's not as long, but the teeth are the teeth are long and a little bit wider apart. The 017 is a lot like the poodle comb, but the teeth are a little bit coarser, a little bit wider apart. So again, the holy grail, the first one that I would go for would be the 004. If you have a really, really, really plush dog and you're not really interested in scissoring, you just really want to get it combed out all that volume, I love the 017. So um, these are newer combs. And what I mean by that is um, in general, this style of comb has only been on the market for probably less than 10 years. And they are really useful because the tines are finer themselves and closer together. So like the Holy Grail, the Greyhound comb, the 000, the 000, this eight and a half inch comb, the 504, is just has finer tines closer together really quite a useful comb for scissoring. Uh, one that I used quite a bit, quite liked it. Uh, the 505 is obviously the coarser side of the 504 with those finer tines does a really good job of combing. Again, these are more for people that are going to scissor. And now we come to a comb, uh, the 507, it's called the Jill. And this comb was sent to me as a prototype and I thought I am going to hate this. And I'm going to tell you, this is my favorite comb of all time. I show standard poodles all over the world. I cannot live without this comb. It does absolutely everything. So the tines are fine. The tines are close together and they have this staggered edge, which means you get the comb ability. You get that super perfection in your comb out because these tines are so close together. But when you go to pick up the coat to scissor it, the coat is really, really well combed out, but you're picking the hair up with the staggered edge and it just changed, this is a life-changing comb. It saved me so much time and energy. Um, I also like it when I'm using products. So if you've had a terrier and you've chalked the legs and now you're combing the legs up to spray them, the, on a finer comb, which gives you the more finished look, the product gets built up, like on the 504 and the 505, really, really quickly. The product doesn't get as built up as fast on the 507, so you can use it for longer, getting a better result. And likewise, for spraying up poodles, when you're spraying up that front of the top knot and you want it to look absolutely perfect, the, the poodle comb which is what I used for 25 years, was amazing for this. And some people still prefer it, but you don't get that super fine finish to the front of the top knot as easily as you do with the 507, the Jill. So for me, a specialty comb, somebody that does a lot of scissoring, maybe you scissor dogs that have product in them. It's great for, shell. I love it for shelties. You can also back comb with it. So it's kind of a multi-tool of a comb, but I, 
love this comb. I cannot tell you enough about it. And it's a comb that I'm going to use for our demonstrations today, along with the poodle comb. Um, so now we get on to some staggered, some specialty products. So the stagger tooth comb is a heavy comb and it is a specialty product made for dematting. So the way the teeth are staggered, and I'll show you one during the demo, it just helps go through those mats and break them apart quite easily. It is all so good for helping to de-shed dogs, dogs that are shedding. And it is heavy, but it's heavy in a good way. It's heavy because then the comb can do the work for you. And that's what I like. It decreases hand fatigue because that comb is actually doing the work. And I like that. So it's a specialty product. It's not going to be used in conjunction with scissoring, but when it comes to those matted dogs, it just helps you along. So now we are going to move into the scissored section of today and we're going to start by telling you the difference between beveled and convex edges. So beveled edges are usually more forgiving. Um, so they're kind of, people think of it as a beginner shear, but some people, like there are some people that just win competitions all over the world and they just will always use a beveled shear. So beveled edges are usually more forgiving. So they're better for dirty coats because they're not going to dull your scissors as much. They're better for new groomers or coats that don't need that super plush finish. So they're for people, some people don't maybe always use them for finish work on a Bichon, on a Poodle. Um, but if you're going through something like a Kerry Blue Terrier's back or you're going through an Irish Water Spaniel, um, sometimes these scissors are really good for that kind of hair. I really like them for like, if I'm gonna bulk out a poodle puppy, that's what I'll use it for. Um, beveled shears are typically sharpened without taking the shear apart and can be sharpened and finished on a machine, which sometimes makes them a little bit less expensive and less expensive to sharpen. So sometimes you'll take your shears to the sharpener and they'll, you know, it'll be one price for these shears and another price for the other shear. And you ask why, well, some are beveled so they don't have to take them apart. They're not as labor intensive. And if you go to a sharpener um, who doesn't have a price differential between a beveled and a convex, I would ask why, because maybe they are not doing the, a great job on your convex shears. Maybe they don't really understand the difference. And that does happen out there. I have had my scissors sharpened improperly and that can be heartbreaking. Um, so the edge of a beveled shear is flatter at the cutting surface. So it doesn't come to as fine a point at the cutting surface. So it is less delicate. And I think this slide is in here twice. Uh, for no good reason. So scissored edges, the convex edge, um, at the cutting edge, they are like at a super, super, super fine point. Now remember both these edges, you would have to like look on, you know, magnified to really notice the difference. But the fact that it's super pointy at that edge makes it more delicate, but it could in the hands of the right groomer with the right foundation done, make the trim look more plush than a beveled shear. Convex shears do need to be sharpened by hand, which make, makes them more expensive to both make, which is why they're more expensive to buy and more expensive to sharpen. Convex edges can and usually do dull quicker if they're used on dirty coats. So if you're going in and you have a big hairy dog and you wanna trim a bunch of that coat off before you bath and dry it, which I do recommend, I'm gonna use my beveled shears, I'm gonna use my convex shears only on clean dogs. And we all know that if you drop a shear on the ground, well, we don't all know. If you drop a shear on the ground, there's a very good chance that it will get a little burr on the cutting edge, which makes them hard to close or hard to open. And that part of that edge is now dull. And this can happen in both kinds of shears, but it will typically happen more easily with a convex edge. Um, so I'm going to demonstrate this, but if any of your shears are dropped or stepped on, I want you to close the shear very, very gently, press the blades together and open slowly. Repeat this process several times and then try closing them normally and see if you still feel that burr. But regardless if you can get rid of that burr or not, the sooner you get them sharpened, the less permanent damage is going to be done to your shear. So when we look over here at the edges, right? So we have 
This is the beveled edge. The beveled edge comes to a point and then just is very slightly flat at the edge where the convex edge just comes to like this super fine point, which makes this more delicate. So typically if you drop them or step on them, what happens is that laser edge just kind of tips over like this and that's why you have a burr in that spot. That's what we mean by a burr on your shear. Okay, so now that we've told you the different kinds of edges, let's talk about the different kinds of shears because there are so many kinds out there. So straight and curved shears are fairly self-explanatory. Curved shears have a curve to the blade and that curve um, can be very, very minimal or very extreme, right? So some scissor companies are putting out curves that have more and more and more curve. Um, and they are for like kind of specialty grooming, um, some artistic grooming, some people like them for poodle rosettes, but just be aware that when not, not all curved shears have the same amount of curve or even the same amount of curve for the length of the blade. Um, straight curve shears are quite new to the grooming industry, which means they've probably been around for like 20 years, right? But like the, there are people that will never, ever, ever use a curve shear. There's people that swear by them. And typically the people that don't use them are people that like started scissoring and learned how to do everything on a straight shear, which makes a lot of sense. Um, straight shears can, and like I said, some people think can, can be used everywhere, right? So you don't need curved shears to create round shapes. It's you doing the work that creates a round shape. Um, and some people just believe, you know, are old school and believe that you should always use a straight shear. But curved shears can make some of those jobs a lot easier and a lot quicker. So uh, shears also come in many different blade lengths. And in general, I like a longer blade on a bigger dog and a shorter blade on a smaller dog kind of makes sense, right? Um, I also like a heavier blade of the shear, just like the heavier comb when I am roughing out a trim. So I'm either using it on a dirty dog or maybe taking a poodle from um, puppy trim to a continental trim. Maybe I'm putting the first show haircut on a black Russian or an Irish water spaniel, um, something or, you know, a doodle that you just want to really get through that hair. You don't want it, you, it doesn't need to be shaved off. It has that big, thick coat. Uh, you know, you can just use a heavier blade to really, and the blade does part of the work because of its weight, but a lighter shear for finishing is sometimes helps you um, so you have less hand fatigue. So um, these are some shears that are available through Cherrybrook and, and Chris Christensen, and they have beveled edges. Um, so the Adel and Rose, so here you can see the straight shears. So they come in different lengths. And then we have the Adel and Rose thinning and blending shears. And uh, did I miss the slide on, oh, here we go. Um, so thinning and blending shears, we'll get to the differences between those two. And then we have the curved shears. So there you can see the Adel and Rose, they're super pretty, they're rose gold. And we can see the different types that we have and the fact that they come in different lengths. Um, and then here are the convex shears. So um, we have the thinning and blending ones. We have the straight. And again, we have the curved in different lengths. Um, so they start at five inch and they go up to 10 inch. And as well, even in the thinning and blending, they have a seven and a half, I think. And well, I know that they have a five and a six and a half thinning shear. And then the blending shear, I think is a seven inch. Um, so, and then we talk a little bit, we do have a lifetime warranty. So Chris Christensen will replace or repair the shears for the lifetime as long as all pieces are included in the box. Um, shears can be sharpened at the Chris Christensen warehouse as many times as you want for free. Um, you do, however, have to pay the shipping. Um, so the shipping is $8.50 within the continental United States, but international shipping as I'm Canadian is always more expensive. Um, and when you buy shears, there's going to be a warranty card in with them, or you can find the warranty online. And please, please, please register that warranty within 45 days to qualify for the free sharpening and the warranty. Okay, so now we're gonna go on to the different scissor types other than straight and curved. So traditionally, so when I started in dogs, uh, thinners meant that both sides had notched blades and blenders were shears with one straight blade that cut and, and one notched blade that cut, right? And um, 
I'm just going to quickly uh, stop sharing. Um, I mean, I am going to demo this, but like, so traditionally thinners, this is a notched blade. Both blades would have been notched traditionally with thinners and not just one. But traditionally now, both in a thinning shear, both of these are sharp edges right now, traditionally for a thinner. Right now, we would call something that had a notched blade on for both blades as a double thinner. But originally, they were called thinning shears. And that is um, a little bit of a problem, not a problem, but it can be confusing when buying shears because people will call things different things. There's no, uh, you know, there's no industry standard for what they called. So some people pick up one that's a double-sided thinner and call it a thinner, but they're right because that's what we used to call them, right? So I'm trying to kind of like cut through the wheat or the chaff for you here. Today, generally, most shears with one notch blade are considered thinners, and shears with both size notch are called double thinners. So blenders and chunkers, here we go, these are really new to the grooming industry, less than 10 years old, are another term for a thinning shear that has one notched blade and one straight blade. So again, but I call them fishtails because the end of the... Um, the notches look like a little fishtail instead of being straighter with a groove. Um, so double-sided thinners take out less hair. They are good for the less aggressive groomer, the new groomer, or dogs with thin coats, and or dogs that need a natural look. Blenders and chunkers are good for faster grooming and good for the barbershop technique, where we use a comb to take the longer outer coat down and blending. So um, I didn't actually do this slide. So I would use a thinner for the barbershop method. And blenders and chunkers are for blending in my grooming where there might be a chunky piece next to another piece. So I'm gonna use a thinner for the barbershop method and a chunker and a blender when I'm actually scissoring a poodle type coat. A thinner I'm going to use on a sporting breed, on a terrier, on a Samoyed, on a Sheltie, on a double coated breed, but the poodle scissored type coats, I generally do not use a thinner. I would only use a blender and chunker. I generally would not use a blender or chunker on those other coat types. Um, so fishtails, which is what I call a blender or a chunker, are almost a full bladed shear. Um, and some, com some companies like Utsumi call these blenders. The T-shaped teeth allow hair to be pushed away from the cutting blade, giving a softer and natural finish. So if you are a person that tends to get a lot of scissor marks, maybe finishing with a fishtail is a good place for you. Or you could also be somebody that is great at finishing, but you have a dog that shows scissor marks because some coat types do. Sometimes a fishtail is great for you. Um, fishtails are so versatile, they can be excellent to remove scissor marks, like I said, and they are great for difficult coats. The more teeth the fishtail has, the finer the finish will be, right? But it, it's the more teeth it has for the length of the blade because obviously a 48 tooth fish tail in a six inch shear is a finer finish than a 48 tooth fish tail in a seven and a half inches shear because they're gonna be spread further apart. Uh, generally, I don't use a fish tail or a thinner or a blender more than seven and a half inches long. So this is what we mean by a fish tail where the end of the um, notch, the end of the tooth, looks like a little fish tail. And the, the more teeth, the closer this gap is, the better finish it gives, the more correcting it does to your scissor work. But again, this is, this is used after a straight shear on breeds. You would use a straight shear on where thinning shears are used on breeds that you typically do not use a straight shear on. And I really want you to understand that difference because I think the previous slide was a little confusing in how it was worded. Um, so scissors can be expensive. So it is really, really important to take good care of them. Um, so, but, it, but the good news is it's easy. It's not difficult. Typically when you buy a Chris Christensen shear, you get everything that you need in order to take care of them. So just do yourself a favor and take care of that investment. You know, they do have a lifetime warranty. They send you all the stuff, register the warranty, look after your shear, and you are not going to regret spending that money. So all scissors should be clean after each use at, at the end of the day. And you can do this with a um, soft cloth. It comes with your scissors. Um, they can be disinfected. 
and wipe down to remove the debris that can cause the damage, right? So if you're grooming a dirty dog, make sure you really clean those scissors because you want that little microscopic dirt, sand, whatever, the dander even out of there so that they don't dull your blades. And um, always store them in a closed case. You don't want that humidity to get in there at your shear. They also come with a little teeny tiny vial of oil that lasts absolutely forever and one or two great uh, one or two drops of oil on the little mechanism is a great way to just make sure they're always in perfect condition. Um, okay, this is another thing that we're going to demo. So how to properly hold your scissors. So many, many people start scissoring their dogs. I see it when I do seminars all the time and they are using their pointer finger and their thumb. So um, that is not the correct way to hold your shears. First of all, if you're that way to open and close a shear, you have to use your whole hand, which creates a lot of hand fatigue. And you don't really have control over a lot of the scissors, so the scissor is going every which way. It's like kind of drunken driving down the road. Um, if you hold them with your ring finger, and your thumb, then you're cradling the scissor in your hand. Again, we're gonna demo this in a moment and you only move your thumb and you might get hand, you might get thumb fatigue, but you're not gonna get hand fatigue. And, but it really, really helps um, control the scissor and I will demo that. Um, you don't really need the little finger rests. Um, most shears have them, but if you're actually relying on the thing, finger rests, you may either have really big hands or you're holding your scissors incorrectly. Um, and typically my thumb doesn't go all the way through the thumb hole, but we'll also demonstrate that. And then we also have scissors that have offset handles. And that is kind of a personal choice. I'm not a big fan of them, um, but some people feel they can get a more dynamic look because their hand is out of the way. And again, some people that have arthritis or hand problems, um, carpal tunnel do like offset handles and some people hate them. Okay. So right now I'm gonna go do the demos and then we are going to talk about the promotion, but you can take a little sneak peek while I'm switching cameras. And the first thing I'm going to show you is something that we didn't talk about, but it's for thinning shears um, and it's the barbershop method and I have to use a model dog for that. Um, and then we'll move on to showing you how to use other types of scissors. And I'm just gonna switch my camera. And you can just, one moment, please. I've moved my light because there was too much light in there previously. Okay, so here we are. And I'm going to demonstrate using the Chris Christensen classic set of shears, which I really like. It's um, four pairs of shears. Uh, they come in a case, bada bing, bada boom. You can see them in the case. They come with the little polishing cloth that we talked about to clean them. It comes with a little thing of oil and it comes with a thinner, a blender, a straight and a curved shear. So these are great, great scissors. So as you can see, these scissors are made so that they can be used by a left and a right handed groomer. And these are the finger rests that we have talked about. So a lot of people come to me and they are holding their scissors like this with their ring finger, their pointer finger and their thumb. So obviously, if you look at the tip of that scissor, I'll try to get it over my black shirt, see how much the end of that scissor is moving. And if I hold it this way, actually I demonstrated this about a month ago and I actually dropped the shear. See how it, okay, I'm gonna really try to like keep them as straight as possible, but see how much the shear is moving. So, and then I could, if I was using my middle finger, um, you know, same thing, I have more control, but like not as much. But then if I hold my ring, finger, like I'm cradling that scissor. So if I'm holding it with my pointer finger, I can't, like I have no control over that shear. But holding it with my ring finger, I'm cradling that scissor. I don't even have my thumb anywhere near it. Um, my baby finger is actually touching that finger rest. And then I simply use my thumb and my thumb isn't all the way through, but that's just how I hold my hand. And see, I'm just moving my thumb to move the shear. And then when I point the shear towards you, see how much more control and like, even if I go fast, like I was before, see how straight that, well, this is a curved shear, but see how straight that scissor is staying pointed towards you instead of like this, where it's moving all around. So that's why we hold them in our ring finger, just moving our thumb up and down. And it wouldn't matter if we are using um, a razor shaper, which is another specialty shear by Chris Christensen, 
um, you know, whether it's upside down, whether it's right side up, you know, and if you're using a curved shear, you can use a curved shear with the point going towards the dog or the point going away from the dog. I'm going to demo that in a minute. Um, so this is a thinning shear. So I'm going to show you, um, so this is, we actually had an emailed question about this today and it was somebody with the Brittany Spaniel, but this would apply to many, many dogs, many sporting breeds, especially um, anything that you're going to shave the neck, you want the neck thinned out. So I'm going to attempt to show you it on the lovely and talented Fifi here. And Fifi was used in another demonstration the other day. So, to, so if you've shaved out the neck, then I want you to strip out all the undercoat out of this neck hair here, right? So you're going to strip all that out with a knife and then you're going to, her ear is going to be in the way. How do we get your ear out of the way? So we're going to do it right here. So you would take, anytime you want to shorten this hair with a thinning shear, you're going to hold the hair up with your comb and run your thinning shear over the top of it. And this way it gets even, this coat becomes even and not um, if you take your thinning shear and you just go into the coat, you have no control over really keeping it nice and even. Where if you hold the coat up with a comb and just take your thinning shear over that comb, you can get this area of your dog nice and even. And we encourage you, so if you had a Brittany Spaniel, well, this is for the person that asked me the question about the Brittany Spaniel. Okay, Fifi, what are we going to do about your ear? Um, Again, you've clippered it here. You would just run the comb up over the hair and run your thinning shear over the comb, making this coat nice and even. Um, and we do have another video, I think, on YouTube on how to do this as well. So that is the barbershop technique using a thinning shear. So now we're going to move on to showing you the combing demo. Ellie May, come up here. Doo -doo. Good girl. Up, up. Okay, so here we have our lovely and talented model, Ellie Mae, and I'm going to stand in front of you for one moment and have her lay down. Okay, so when we are doing a correct brushing and combing technique, combing your dog for scissoring is not this. If you comb your dog like this, all the way through all of the coat at once, you are not going to get the same results when you're scissoring. This is also not the correct way to brush out your dog. So she has had her belly shaved because she was recently spayed. So we would start in here. I have bottoms up diluted 10 to one. So I'm going to lightly mist the hair. Then I'm going to, to drop the spray bottle on the ground. Then I'm going to take a small layer of coat. So people say how much, so I'm not taking all of this coat. People say, how much should I take? So I say, take a finger's width of coat. So I'm going to take a finger's width of coat. And if you're not used to it, you could use a plastic tailed comb, maybe a knitting needle, and you could make a line of coat. And it is really important that you see the skin. So you can see the white line of her skin there. And you're just going to brush all of the coat down towards the belly. Then you're going to use, like, I'm going to use my wide poodle comb. And then I'm going to use my fine Jill comb. And I'm just going to keep repeating this process. I'm going to take another layer, like one from that line, the white line where I can see her skin. I'm going to take one layer and I'm going to part it again down to the skin. I'm going to brush it with my brush. I might at this point give it another little mist. So you can see that we are misting the coat. We're not soaking it. Then we're going to comb it again with our wide tooth comb. Then we are going to comb it with our fine tooth comb. So we're going to do this all over the entire dog so that then she is ready to be scissored. So obviously I already did this before the webinar so that I could show you how to use the different kinds of shears. So we will move on to that. So I still use bottoms up as my scissoring spray. Don't fall off there, darling. Good girl. Good girl. All right, so now we're just going to move her to where you can see her legs. Okay, so now I've already um, combed her out. I did it before the webinar. I'm going to lightly mist her. You never 
always like you're not soaking them you want to lightly mist them and then you're going to comb the hair out so that you can see um, where the area that you have to scissor the dog so you're going to comb the dog all over with our lovely jill comb and then i'm going to use a straight shear and when you're scissoring so you can see that i'm holding the shear with my ring finger and my thumb and I'm just going to take the shear, this is a straight shear, and I'm just going to, the wider I can make each cut, the more even it's going to turn out. Because I, if I'm making one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cuts, it's gonna turn out more even than going and making 30 cuts to get down to this area. So that's one thing to keep in mind as you're training yourself how to use shears. If you are using a curved shear, which I think I misplaced. Nope, here they are. So using the curved shear, so here I'm using the curved shear to go, uh, this is round, so I'm using it to go like around her body. Um, this is another good place to use a curved shear. See this angle that is right here? That curved shear helps create that angle. So I can go all the way across the chest. But if I want to turn the curve shear backwards with the point going away, oh, it's too bad that, that cart, my cart of supplies is there. So let's move from this way a little bit. Okay, so I can use the curve shear with the points going towards the dog to create this angle. The curve shear actually does the work, creates the angle for me. Then I can take that shirt shear and I can flip it backwards and go down through this area to then continue along this area as well. Same thing, curved shears going back up, creating this curved area. Then if I had my blender, which would have been useful if I had it out of the case, um, and say, so right here earlier, I made a hole in my trimming. So I can take my blender and anywhere that I would use a straight shear different than the thinning shear on Fifi, I can use my blender and you can see that it almost does the same kind of job, but it just blends that scissoring together. Um, if we wanted to use it right here on the front of her leg, we can see how it blends that scissoring together. So another word about scissoring that I would like you to be aware of, and I just need to turn our camera up. Um, it, two other things that I would like to point out quickly when we're thinking about scissoring techniques is when I am scissoring my dog, generally I, you know, her top line comes off and rounds, but if you scissor this coming off the top and you're always thinking of making it round, you're going to lose your, your shape. So I prefer to think of this line as a straight line. And then this line coming down the side of the body as another straight line and then blend these two lines together. So thinking of our lines as straight lines, a straight line here and a straight line here, scissoring in straight lines is a great way to improve your skill as a groomer. And then another great way when we're talking about using curve shears the right way and so going towards our dogs and going away from our dogs is this. I'm just going to tip this up. So as we, we can scissor with the curve shear with the point, see the point is going down towards the dog's body. And then as we go over the top of the neck, because we want to blend this area in here that a lot of people have problems with, we can turn the shear the opposite way and it goes down and basically does the job again for you of blending those withers into the neck. So curve shear going the correct way, the point, well, people, yes, I guess it's not necessarily correct, but the curve shear going the traditional way with the point towards the dog as we hit the occiput, flipping them over, turning it the other way to help blend this wither line into our dog. So those are all different ways of looking, of scissoring, using shears, holding them properly, etc. And then the last thing that I'm going to show you before we move on to our Q&A is this. So we talked about having our shears and dropping them, right? So when we drop them, what happens is this beveled edge gets a little turn in it, right? So instead of being straight up, it flops over at the very tip. So if that happens to you, this is what I want you to do. 
I want you to gently close your shears because you're going to feel that burr. They're not going to want to close at that point. So close them as gently as possible and then squeeze the blades together. So these two fingers are squeezing these blades together as I gently open them. So this is trying to straighten that burr out. And then I'm going to gently close them again. Hopefully the burr doesn't feel as big that time. Maybe it does. Um, depends on the surface you dropped them on, if you stepped on them. So I'm going to repeat that process, you know, five to 10 times till I can hopefully not feel the burr. Now at this point, if they're the only shears that you have with you, most likely you can get away with using them. They might have a dull spot, but try to get them sharpened at this point as quickly as possible and it will extend the life of your shears. So now we're going to go back to our tutorial and get to your live Q&A. This just takes me a minute to gather my belongings. And I'm going to switch cameras. And we are going to go to the... All right. So if you haven't sent in your question, I encourage you to send in your question now. I see that we have quite a few to get through. But in the meantime, I hope that you enjoyed that tutorial, the short demonstration that we were able to give you. We only have an hour to work with here. Um, and Cherry Brook has just been so fabulous in bringing this free education to you so that you can learn more about scissors, scissoring techniques, etc. So here is promotions that are just for you. You need to go to cherrybrook.com to get these. So we have a bag deal. You buy a Big G, which is my favorite slicker. It creates volume. Um, I, if you've been on any of my other webinars, you know that this is my go-to product. It can really help with your scissoring. Um, you buy a Big G or its cousin, the Big K, which is also an amazing slicker. Just the pin, there's 30% more pins in a Big G, which to me means it does 30% more work for the same amount of effort. Um, you get a free shampoo and conditioner. You don't need a coupon for that. Um, so that's a $22 savings. Um, a special that we had left over from last webinar, which I have had a lot of people that love this, um, the Magic Foam, the brush cleaning kit. So spend $75 on any Chris products, get the brush cleaning kit for free. We all know that taking care of our tools is the best way to go, but for this one, you need to use the code 75brush. And then 10% off all Chris Christensen shears. So Chris Christensen shears are an amazing value. We talked about their lifetime warranty, lifetime free sharpening. Use the code CC shears with an S 10 at checkout, 10% off all the shears. Now's the time to stock up. You know, somebody wants a Christmas gift, boom, stock them up. Okay. I'm going to leave that slide up to you for you. And I am going to go to the live Q and A and it is right here. All right, first question. Um, I have two Havanese, one is in full coat, the other is a puppy coat. I groom them myself, I'm not a professional groomer. I'd like to know what kind of thinning shears would be helpful in evening out the coat after I clipper or scissor them. Sometimes it looks choppy and the thinning shears I have take off so little hair that I have trouble getting a smooth finish. So I would use a blender. That's a perfect place to use a blender. I think thinning shears are the reason that they're using, that they're going choppy. Um, so the artisan blender would be a great choice for you. Alicia says the best starter set in a few price ranges for a new beginner groomer in training. So the classic set of shears, which hopefully Cherry Brook has because I noticed it wasn't in the presentation, but they're by Chris Christensen. They're the set that I use today. So it is a, um, a chunker blender, a thinner, a straight and a curved. And let me tell you, these are supposed to be a beginning set of shears, but not only are they a great workhorse, I have done a lot of finishing work with them. I've been using them exclusively for like six weeks just because I really wanted to put them to the test. I have shears that, um, are thousand like literally I have thousand dollar shears and these I mean I'm not telling you that they put the same finish but it's comparable it's comparable for the price and I think that the set all four pairs of shears is less than three hundred dollars I only saying that because I know it's around four hundred dollars Canadian so I'm just trying to do the change in my head Lori asks, will the slides be available for download? No, Lori, the slides um, are not. However, you will be sent a copy of the recording so that you can watch at your leisure. 
Uh, Edith asked what type of slicker brush should be used on a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel. Is the Big G too big? Uh, the Big G comes in baby and I use the Big G on everything. So I would buy the baby Big G. A note about Cavaliers, if you're going into the show ring, I personally only use a pin brush on their ears until their ears are 90% dry. And then I use a slicker brush because it makes the ears bigger and fuller. Uh, Stephanie, yes, we will be emailing the recording uh, it, in about, it takes about 48 hours. We have to get the recording from Zoom, then we have to make it pretty, then Katie does all of her job on it, but you will get it. Um, Teresa says, what is a good alternative for the G64 for the Persian? The G64 looks too big for a cat. Teresa, could you add your question at the bottom? Are you talking about the big G? Is that the G64? Oh yeah, the G64, I guess $64. The baby G, um, or you could use like the Mark II, like the Mark series of slickers comes in the tiny, which I believe is the Mark X and the triangle, which is the Mark V or the other way around. Um, yeah, that's what I would use. Shantzi asks, what comb would be ideal for legato? I used to have some legatos. I would start with the poodle comb um, because you want that rustic look for them. Um, so I would either use the 000, the, you know, the basic holy grail of combs or the poodle comb because a legato, to keep that kind of rustic curl, you want it a bit of a wider tooth. Uh, Susie says, thank you, Alison, regarding the CC Artisan five inch thinner, double-sided blender, is it, are they really good scissors? Yeah, they're amazing. Um, I'm not, I don't use the double-sided blender a lot, but the Chunky Blender is a great, great, great shear. And I think the Artisan five um, inch thinner is the one that I always use on everything. Um, somebody else asked, what combs would you recommend for Havanese? I'm gonna use the Jill, the 507, all the way on my Havanese. Uh, Chris asks, basic, best basic combs and brushes for Shelties. So I'm gonna use the Breezy Brush um, Oblong, the red pad, which is the medium firmness. Nope, the green pad, which is the medium firmness, um, 22 millimeter pin. That is a great brush for Shelties. I'm gonna use the big G in medium. Um, and I would use the 000 comb. Um, Jeanette asks, what scissors do you use for double coated breeds? I use the Artisan Thinner or the Classic Thinner in the set that I just showed you. Jennifer asks, can you talk about how you would trim a pug and how to shape their booty? Um, would you trim anything else besides the tail and the booty? So yeah, Jennifer, you sent me an email. So um, I trim the neck, I trim the underline, um, I trim a lot of stuff on my pug. I would trim the back of the tail by just putting the thinner on the back of the tail, but I would use that barbershop method. That's how I, so, and I would trim off the rosettes, like the cow looks on either side of the butt. Um, but I use the barbershop method on the front of the neck, up to the chin, on the sides of the neck, and around that booty. So that little booty tail set area, use the barbershop method. Hold the hair up with your comb and then take the tips off like I was showing you on Fifi. Um, I also have another video or webinar that has that technique on there, but that's exactly how I trimmed mine. If that's not enough explanation, just follow up with another email and I'll help you out. Uh, these scissor types are very confusing. I have a wavy Portuguese water dog. I have a straight shear and a curved shear, which I like very much. Which specialty shear do I also require? If you're having, if you're happy with the results that you're getting with your straight and your curved, I don't think there's a reason to buy another shear. Um, if you're, oh, it's a wavy. So for a wavy, I might buy the blender, like the artisan chunky blender, um, because if you're afraid that sometimes you get a little bit too even of a look, but if you're happy with the job that you're doing, you can st a straighten a curve is the way to go. For a long time, that's all we ever had. Like these are just new shears. Um, please suggest a straight scissors for a large handed man to use on a standard poodle. So I'm going to use um, the longer artisan shear um, on my standard poodle. So take a look and I think the largest one is a nine and a half inch. Um, Jane has, how do you measure the length of the scissors, the blade or the whole length? It's the whole length of the scissors. But again, there is no industry standard out there. I could actually even just get my tape measure and uh, I know and see what this says because sometimes I give you the wrong information. Yet, yeah. So it's the, the, the length of the shear, not including the finger rest, right? So um, it's not includes, just you have to look at the little tiny meat. It's not including this, but it's from 
here, like the round part to the tip. Um, Cheryl, hi Cheryl, I have rough collies and need advice for the fine hairs around the ears, which are trimmed. The hairs are super fine and silky. So Cheryl, yes, I used to have Shetland Sheepdogs. I know all about those hairs and they are a pain in the butt. Um, so I use a thinner on them. I use the finest thinner that I can get. I also use a really small thinner on them, like a shorter one, because I find it's easier to get around the ears. I also put a little bit of baby powder in there sometimes when I'm trimming them to help them stand out a little bit. So then they're easier to trim. Lori, when using the thinning shears, does it matter if the straight blade is on the top or the bottom? The straight blade should typically be on the bottom, doesn't really matter, but you're going to get a better cutting action with the straight edge on the bottom. Uh, Jennifer says, I miss what spray. I was using Bottoms Up by Chris Christensen, diluted 10 to 1 in a Chris Christensen double trigger spray bottle. Uh, Catherine, would you use the same line comb out on a spaniel or a setter? Yes, I would, although with a set like so if we're talking English Cocker Spaniel, some of them are really woolly coated. So yes, I would lay them down and brush them out um, after they've been blown dry straight. Setters, you can usually get the hair like while they're standing up doing it. But you know, if they have really thick hair like on an English setter, um, sometimes I would lay them down to get through really woolly, woolly coat. But I definitely have trained my English setters and my English Cockers, but definitely American Cockers, that's exactly how I would do it. Uh, Linda says Yorkies. So Linda, you're going to have to provide me with a little more information than that. Ooh, Catherine, you sent me a novel, but I like it. Um, I have a 14 month old English sheepdog with a very thick coat. I've tried all kinds of brushes and have the CC Big K, which doesn't seem to pull out much. Uh, I have a Kenshi, I have two Maddens, I have the Le Pooch. Okay. Do I think the CC Coral, which is the big G, is worth buying? Absolutely, positively, I do, because I used to be a huge Le Pooch fan. I used to use the Le Pooch on all my old English sheepdogs, on everything really thick, and it took a long time for them to convince me to use the big G. This is long before I worked for Chris Christensen, and honestly, it is amazing. Um, it will help you get the undercoat out if you are using it properly. Uh, she also uses an Aronco comb, um, but it doesn't work as well as a cheap one I bought. Um, also, do I recommend brushing dry? No, never ever brush dry because you're creating static. Static creates mats. Static keeps the undercoat in there instead of out of there. Um, if I use a rake, I would use a Coat King coarse rake. Um, so the one that has a curved like a claw. Um, it won't take out his overcoat if you're using it properly. So going with the grain of the hair, not across the hair over top, because then it will cut the hair. Um, so yes, use the rake and kind of use the line combing technique with the rake. You could also use the stagger tooth comb, but again, being aggressive with it. He will let me brush him, except he hates his front paws and chest done and yelps before I even touch him. So make sure the brushes that you have used have round ground pins. That's why you use a more expensive brush. Uh, Karen says, well, does it matter what edge is closer to the dog? I prefer the straight edge to be closer to the dog, but um, that's my personal preface. How do you, can you please show the proper technique for flipping your shears in your hand? Okay, so I'm just going to stop sharing and I need to move these out of my way. So here's the shear in my hand. I'm going to move away and all I do is just flip it around and quickly my, you know, you have to practice and I suggest practicing with a big towel or dog bed in your lap. So if they fall, they're not falling on the ground, but right. So the shear is in my hand like that and I just quickly flip it over. That is the technique that I use and I am going to share my screen again because I want you to be able to see the deal. Then I have to find the Q&A. Here we go. Um, Karen asks, how do you avoid scissor lines and trimming feathers on an Aussie? So make sure that you're blowing them dry the same way all the time. Make sure that the undercoat is stripped out. It's typically the undercoat that shows the scissor lines and then use the thinning shear, but you're going to use a thinning shear like one or two cuts, comb it one or two cuts. Don't like just trim the whole thing and stand back and look because then you're going to have scissor lines. Remember to use maybe a wider tooth thinner, like a thinner with not as many teeth in it if you are getting scissor lines. Carol says, what shape scissor did you use showing the square on the back? I used a straight shear. Beverly says, can you talk about how many teeth a thinning blender chunker should have and what the difference is? Hi i.e. how many teeth would you use for a new beak? So I would use like a 7.5 inch 
blender on a new fee, like a thinner that had about 48 teeth, I wouldn't really go finer than that. Um, and it, it's not should have because you can buy like, there's a shear out there called the magic eraser that has 80 teeth on it. And it is an eraser, but it would be useless for a new fee. You need something that's going to go in there and do the work for you. Uh, Erica says, please explain how tight the knob should be. So I'm assuming that you mean the adjustable tension control. Okay. So the adjustable, oop, boop, boop. I'm going to stop sharing because otherwise somebody will yell at me. Okay. So here is the shear and it has this adjustable tension. This is a knob. So you can adjust whether it's loose or whether it's tight, completely personal preference. Doesn't matter, right? It's up to you. It's what you, what is comfortable for you. What is cutting the hair? What is doing the job that you need it to do? Another thing, if your shears do not have that adjustable tension rod, then, um, when you have your shears sharpened, don't just take them from the sharpener and go. Well, I mean, if they're getting nailed to you, then you have, but you can adjust it with a screwdriver, right? Or have the sharpener do it. Uh, Liz asks, what sh length shears do you recommend for a mini poodle? I would use anything seven and a half inches and longer. What type of, Juanita asks, what type of comb do you recommend to use on an Aussie? I use the poodle comb and the Jill comb. I use the poodle comb and the Jill comb on everything. Um, Tracy says, what is your go-to de-shedding tool? So it's the big T rake. So it's basically the stagger tooth comb um, that we showed you, but it's on a handle. It's by Chris Christensen. It does a great job. Again, it's heavy, um, but I think the heaviness helps drag that extra undercoat out. You can use it in the tub. You can use it dry. Michelle asks, I'm going from a wash and wear breed to a barbet. Oh, good for you. Can you recommend beginner sources on grooming a rustic breed? Yes. So if you don't know, I have a complete online dog show school, which is grooming, in-depth grooming. And one of the things we talk about is grooming a rustic or natural coated breed and the difference between well-groomed and rustic, well, well-groomed and untrimmed because so many people with these rustic breeds think they don't need to be groomed. They need to be groomed and then to be made look rustic. So I would suggest um, you go maybe look up Poodle Prep because they still need to be bathed and dried straight and then you add that curl back into the coat. That is the only way to get the look you're after. Also you could look up the finishing touches start with the bath, a webinar that we have done there. So that is at leadingedgedogshowacademy.com. You can also send me an email and I'll help you out. Uh, Marilyn says, what products do you recommend for spraying on a dry coat prior to brushing? I like Just Divine brushing spray. It's one of my go-tos. So it depends what I'm trying to get the coat to do. If I'm just brushing them out and I'm not going to scissor them, I am going to use the Just Divine spray or whatever conditioner I use, I'll dilute it 10 to one in a spray bottle and use that as my brushing spray if I run out of Just Divine. Um, and that's just for brushing, but I always use bottoms up if I'm going to scissor them. So if I'm brushing out, planning on scissoring them, I use bottoms up. If I'm brushing out for general maintenance, um, then I use Just Divine or the conditioner. Sorry, I was reading the next question in the middle of answering yours. Jennifer says, what are razor shapers and what are their use? So again, I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to show you. So a razor shaper, um, it would, it's really useful for like golden retrievers, Bernese mountain dogs, um, those kind of double coated breeds. So basically it's a straight shear, but you can see these, oh, you can't, it's a straight shear. You can see these tines here. These are the finer tines. These are the coarser tines that allows you to use this as a razor shaper. So like um, some barbers would use a razor and this helps you like maybe take down the sides of the neck, um, the back of the back legs. This could also be useful for the pug question. Um, I did use it on the sides of my neck. Like I didn't use it to trim up and over the butt of my pug, but to thin down the sides of necks like Boston Terriers, pugs, those kind of short coated breeds, Dobermans, it works really, really well on. I have to go back to our deal um, and I'm going to share this. And for those of you asking, here is the Leading Edge Dog Show Academy stuff. I'm just going to leave that up and I'll go back to the deal. But this is where you can find all the information on our courses on grooming, on handling, really, really in-depth things. Again, by any of the videos, they come with support. They come with, a, you know, you keep them for life. 
Um, oh, I forgot to look at your name. Teresa. Teresa, bearded collie feet are my nemesis. <laughs> they used to be mine. Uh, the standard does not allow clipping or scissoring of the dog except the foot pads and the leveling of the bottom of the feet, but they aren't allowed to look structured or clipped. Can you explain the best way to do this? I show dogs, but I am not a professional groomer. So this is a great question, Teresa and something that people struggle with all the time. So this goes back to kind of those more natural rustic breeds. So first of all, you have to understand that even though that's what your standard says, 95% of all beardies in the ring have had their feet trimmed or scissored. And so what I like to do is I like to blow them out perfectly straight, brush them and comb them, and then I am going to scissor them with my thinning shear. I'm going to scissor the shape that I want in there with my thinning shear and the thinning shear is the best way to get the shape that you want. Again, we do have a course that shows you how to do this. Um, we are out of time for demonstration, so I can't show you how to do it right now. Um, and if you think they look, so I would do it 10 days before the dog show. You could, should practice now, right? Because now there's limited dog shows. Trim that foot with your thinning shear. If it looks too neat and natural, go in with the tip of your shear and just kind of rough it up a little bit, right? And then you can kind of, if you start practicing now, you can kind of get that balance between what looks shaped because you don't want those toe hairs because what always happens with beardy feet is those toe hairs grow out the wrong way and make your dog look like they're standing east-west when they're not. So even if you just go in and trim those toe hairs, you know, the straggly ones that are pointing the wrong way into the rest of the foot, it's going to look more natural. Um, Rebecca says, thanks for the great info. Thanks, Rebecca. Can you talk about trimming around the feet and between the paw pads? So I would use a really short shear, so like the five inch artisan to do that, and the thinning shear for the top of the toes. Um, so I'm going to trim around the edge first, and I don't really, and you know, flip the foot over and trim in between the pads. You can also clip her out in between the pads of the underneath, but you can just use the really, really short artisan shears. I find those really useful for that. Uh, Linda says, do you always store the shears in their original boxes or is there another way to store them? I like the Chris Christensen cases that the scissors come in because they're quite robust. Um, they zip up all the way around so your shears cannot fall out of them. Now I have bought other shears from other companies where they're just like in a cardboard box and the lid flips down and those aren't as safe. You can buy, I think Cherry Book has it as well, check it out on their website. You can buy like leather roll-ups for shears, additional cases, cases that can take like 10 shears at a time so you don't have five or 10 different cases. So you can check those out. But if I'm buying Chris Christensen shears, I keep them in their original cases because they have great cases. But I do agree there are other companies where the cases just aren't as good. Diane, what is the best brush and comb to use on a Golden's coat to keep them brushed and to keep the shedding down? So I'm gonna use the big G and the and the Jill comb. So use the big G and brush them all the time. Brush them, you know, twice a week or more and just brush. The big G is a really, really great de-shedder and will get a lot of that coat out. You could, if they have matting, like big shedding in their pants, like where the coat is longer, you could use the T-rake as well. Um, Rebecca asks, one more question. You're allowed as many as you want, Rebecca. No limit. What resources would you recommend for training my dog to be cooperative with grooming laying on the side? Well, that's a great question. If you head on over to leadingedgedogshowacademy.com on YouTube, so I guess it's just YouTube and then you go to Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. Um, we just posted a video like two weeks ago on training your dog to lay down. Bada bing, bada boom, it's there. Um, Stephanie says, what was the mist you used when I was brushing? Because I was brushing with the intent of scissoring, I used bottoms up, diluted 10 to one. Yes, you can use just water. I would prefer that you use just water rather than no spray at all. Um, and just water is good for some, some hair tights. Typically I use a product. Um, Hakari asks, tips for a long haired dachshund smoothing out a full and wavy coat. So it's all about blowing them dry. So first of all, you're going to rake out all of that undercoat. That's the first thing you have to do. So you have to rake it out with like um, a classic knife, rake out all that undercoat because the undercoat is making the top coat sit up and be wavy. Then you're going to dry them in the direction that the coat is going. So I'm going to bath them in clean start. Um, and maybe put some thick and thicker aerosol mousse, or mousse in there before I dry them. I'm going to dry them with a velocity dryer going in the direction that the coat goes. Then a hot dryer to get out the waves. So a hot dryer is not your high velocity dryer. It is not your extreme dryer that goes hot. It is a separate 
hot dryer. It can be the hair dryer you use for your own hair. It can be the dews dryer. That is a great dryer that Cherry Brook sells on hot. The heat is what is going to style that hair and get it straight. Then we have a webinar on this as well. Once that hair is straight, they cannot be in a wire crate. They cannot wear a harness. They cannot um, play with other dogs. They cannot go out in the rain. For the time that you want that coat to be straight, they have to be looked after properly. But the hot dryer is the key. If you're drying them and they are perfectly straight after hot drying and then they go wavy six hours or less later, it's because they weren't actually dry. The hair was just hot when you felt it, not actually dry. Vicki says, how about rough collies? Vicki, I need a little more info to help you there. Uh, Linda says, would you use the same thing, same thinning technique on a standard schnauzer beard as what you showed us? So would I use the barbershop method on a standard schnauzer? I would use it up the sides of their neck. On the beard, um, I don't know really what you mean. You might have to email me. Patty, how can I manage what's developed into a spade bitch coat on a newfie? It's like Brillo. So we do have, um, we did do it on another Cherry Brick webinar, so you could look that up. We also have a YouTube called The Plastic Bag Method, How to Deep Condition Your Dog, and that with Miracle Cream by Chris Christensen. So use Miracle Cream and go to YouTube, look up Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, and do the plastic bag method that will soften up the hair. You might have to do it every bath for like three baths before it really starts to take effect, but it will make a difference. I've done it myself on Shelties with that same problem. Uh, Cheryl says, can you use a classic set of scissors in either the right or left hand? Absolutely, you can. Stephanie asks, what do you recommend for an Aussie? I'm not sure if you're talking about combs, poodle comb and Jill. If you're talking scissors, a thinner and a blender. Um, Marley, I'm, if I'm screwing up your name, your name sounds like it's probably really beautiful. Uh, what shears and combs do you recommend for Persian show cats? So I have a Persian cat, but she's a pet, not a show cat. So I use the Jill comb, but they do have a small Jill comb made for cats, but it might be 513. I can't really remember the number, but if you look it up, it looks just like the Jill. So if you think the Jill is too long for your cat, they do have a cat sized one. And I like the um, Mark II slicker, the medium one, or the Mark tiny. So the Mark tiny is, I believe, the X. It could be the X or the B. Look it up. The tiny one is great for Persian cats. Uh, Rebecca says, what combs and brushes would you recommend for the K's hound? So I'm going to use the oblong breezy brush in the um, medium pad firmness 22 millimeter pin, the big G slicker in medium, and the Jill comb. Uh, would, Linda says, would I use a slicker brush on a Papillon? I'd use the Mark II Tiny Slicker, um, so it's not the Mark. The Mark, oh, I knew this last week, so I'm pretty sure it's the Mark X is the tiny, it might be just be called tiny. You'll see it's tiny, but I'm only going to use it on the legs and for like little tiny hairs, but I'm mostly using a pin brush on my Papillon. Audrey asks, what do you recommend to trim beardy feet? I'm going to use the Artisan Thinner, the six and a half inch thinner. Um, another, a different Audrey asks, what's the best slicker to use on Shelties? I have two of them. I use the big G in medium on my Shelties. Um, Ch Chosi, Chossy asks, I'm new to grooming and be showing a legato. What would be a good basic shears to start with? Um, will I need curved and straight and blenders or thinners? You will need curved, straight and blenders. I would go with the classic set because you're basically getting the thinner for free. Um, but you do need you need a, a straight and a curved for sure. Um, the blender, you could decide later if you wanted the blender. Um, combs and scissors for the soft coat of Wheaton. So poodle comb and Jill comb, because you need that poodle comb to set that wave in your Wheaton. And I'm going to use probably the artisan um, blender on my Wheaton or the thinner. Maybe I, it depends whether it was more Irish coated or more North American coated. The more North American coated, I'm going to use a blender. The more Irish coated, I'm going to use a thinner. Cheryl again, best shears for Newfies for chunking and thinning and blending. So I'm going to use the Artisan Chunky Blender and the Artisan Thinner, the longer ones, obviously, because you have so much acreage to work with. Um, Catherine, do you have a video of grooming and combing out an Old English Sheepdog with a full coat? We have one in the works. Um, we are working, we had a dog booked in, but COVID stopped that, but we are doing an Old English Sheepdog course. It's not going to be a shave down course at all. It's going to be a full on grooming course on the Old English Sheepdog. Uh, Deborah asks, what comb and shears for a corgi? 
Um, so I am going to use the Big G Slicker in Baby. I'm going to use an oblong breezy brush in the firmest pad, um, and I'm, which is the red pad, and I'm going to use the 16 millimeter inch pin. Um, and of course, I'm going to use the Jill comb because that's the only one I use. Um, Jennifer says, this has been excellent. Thanks, Jennifer, for letting me know. Ed asks, what type of shear would work best on shaping a golden retriever, feathers, and pants under the tail? Um, I'm going to use the artisan fitting shear. So that's how I would do that. Cheryl says, thank you. You're welcome, Cheryl. Uh, Krista says, what do you recommend for trimming feet on a border collie? I'm going to use a short artisan straight shear for doing the edges and underneath. And then I'm going to use the artisan, either the shorter or the longer, your personal preference. I'd probably get the longer shear because then you can do the other trimming with it, the artisan 6.5 thinner. Um, Yorkies, mostly straight cutting. What's the best scissors and combs? The Jill comb, fantastic for Yorkies because it's so fine and Yorkie hair is so fine. You can finally get all of those little hairs exactly where you need them. And any of the straight shears would do. Um, I would probably use the Artisan because you want that super, super fine edge on that Yorkie trimming. Um, Sheila, yes, I have the Grooming New Fee Masterclass right on my website. Head on over there and uh, Help yourself out if you need any questions or support. It's called Newfoundland Grooming Masterclass right there. Um, had a lovely actually dog. He was actually not, he was really obnoxious when I went to groom him. Um, Barbara says, any suggestions for scissoring technique for someone with arthritis in the thumb from scissoring? Yes. Um, so I put a lot of tiger balm on my thumb before I start scissoring and just really making sure that your dog is clean, um, that you are using a really, really sharp shear. So I would probably use more of a convex and a lighter shear and something that you can adjust the tension because I find I adjust the tension a couple times and it just helps my hand fatigue. Patricia says, what would you use to trim around the paws on a noof? So I'm gonna use um, a shorter artisan shear because, or sh the Adeline Rose shear, it's gonna be just a little bit um, heftier. Carol, what beginner kit do you recommend for a standard poodle? So if you're talking about scissors, I would use the classic set of, of shears. And Carol, if it, you mean other things, um, I I'm going to use the Fusion 27 millimeter pin brush and the Big G Slicker, a uh, clean start shampoo and after you bathe, because after you bathe saves 30% of your drying time. And if you have a standard poodle, like I used to have 30 of them, time is money. But Carol, if you need anything else, uh, email me or check out Poodle University in my school, award-winning courses on poodle grooming. Uh, do, 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 do. Erica, is grooming school only for big hair breeds or would a smooth coated sporting dogs be covered also? Scissoring ears is scary. Uh, so my school has courses by Will Alexander who went best in show at Westminster Kennel Club on English setters, spaniels, and Irish setters. So I would encourage you to check that out. He is amazing. Uh, Carol says, what would you use ice on ice for? So I use ice on ice ready to use um, detangling spray for brushing out poodles, especially ones going through coat change. I use the ice on ice detangling system. So that is the shampoo, the conditioner, and the ready to use for poodles going through a coat change. I use the ice on ice ultra, the misty spray um, for brushing out poodles that are going through coat change or are matting, or sometimes they're just, you think they're going to mat because the weather's changing. So I live in a rainforest and the weather's starting to change. So I need some of that, even just an Ellie Mays neck at the length that it is at. Uh, Lori says, will this appear as a rerun somewhere else? Yes. The recording will be emailed out to you in about 48 hours. Um, Lori says, have you groomed long-haired dachshunds? Yes, I've won best in shows on long-haired dachshunds. Do I have a video? Um, I don't have a video at the moment, but it is one of the breeds that we are working on. Uh, Tanya asks, what is the best approach to trim or shave out the ears? So I like to use a thinning shear and I like to really flip the ear back and just go in. I don't shave out the ears in my cats, um, but I will use a thinning shear and just go in and get all those little hairs out of there. Um, do you recommend the big G for Havanese or only at only after the 507 comb? I would use, I use the big G, I would use a baby big G on the Havanese and the 507. Uh, Marilyn, it depends what breed of dog as to what high velocity dryer. I mean, I use the two extreme by Chris Christensen because you can dial it down. So you get the best of both worlds. You get a lot of velocity if you need it and you can dial it down for when you don't need it. 
On a pet Shih Tzu head, do you use the chunkers to take the hair down and create a roundish head and use chunkers to thin the cheeks? How do you use round tip scissors to trim the muzzle hair below the eyes? Um, I don't use round tip shears. I use curved shears pointing backwards with the point going towards me. I do have a course on Asian fusion grooming, which will cover the, everything that you need to know here. But I do use the chunkers and the blenders on the rest of the face. And then the smaller curved shears with the point going towards me for that hair under the eyes. I find blunt tip scissors useless for that. Um, Vicky, what would you use for for a product for giving the coat volume and control. Depends what breed we're talking about. I mean, bottoms up is my go-to for volume. Um, Stephanie says, my Aussie ha has burrs on his back and the hair is very damaged. What would you recommend to help? It looks very damaged and curly where I pulled them out. So I would go to the Miracle Cream or Spectrum 10 Hypro Pack and I would use the plastic bag method, which you can access for free on my YouTube channel. And this will really start repairing that damage. Also thick and thicker volume response protein. If the hair is very, very frayed at the ends, you could give that a try as well. And you don't use that with the plastic bag method. You can just use it during a normal bath. Jeanette asks, what comb would you recommend for a rough collie? Um, poodle comb because you can comb the hair up and you know it's wide enough to do it's narrow enough to do everything that you need to do for a rough collie um poodle comb would be my go-to stephanie what was the number on the poodle comb and the other that you recommend for the aussies so it's the 507 is the jill and the poodle comb uh, might be the 007 but it is listed also as poodle comb um, at least on the Chris Christensen website. If you're confused, send me an email and I'll make sure you get the correct link from Cherry Brook. But also if you email customer service at Cherry Brook, they're awesome as well. Uh, what kind of shears would you use for a Cavalier King Charles Spaniel? I would use a thinner only. A straight shear for under the pads of the feet, but a thinner for everything else. Marilyn says, great info, Allison. Thanks, Marilyn. Thanks for joining me. Juanita, I learned a lot. I'm not a professional groomer. Thanks, Juanita. Reach out if you need any other help. Uh, what brush and slicker would you, Virginia asked, what brush and slicker would I use in my full coated Havanese? I'd use a big G in baby, and then I would use um, an oval or oblong, your choice. Breezy brush um, in lilac, the softest pad, 22 millimeter pin. Amy, what brush and shears do you suggest for a Scottish Terrier? So I'm going to use the big G in medium. I'm going to use the breezy brush oblong uh, 16 millimeter pin in red, the firmest pad. And I'm going to use the artisan thinning shear. Oh, Debbie has a, has a Bouvier. I used to show so many Bouviers. Um, so I'm going to use the big K. I never recommend the big K only because I'm a big G fan, but for Bouvier's Black Russians, that super, super, super dense coat, I recommend the big K. It's just like the big G with a few less pins. Poodle comb for you all the way. And the shears, if you can get a hold of that classic set of shears, it's going to have everything that you need. Um, ooh, Margaret. Oh, oh no, I did something and lost you, Margaret. What did I do? Oh, there we go. We found you again, Margaret. Uh, what conditioner and comb brush should I use on my Papillon ear fringing? So I'm going to use the um, Andreas bristle brush. And so I'm going to use the day-to-day -day conditioner. This is for maintenance. I'm going to use the Andreas bristle brush and I'm going to use the 507 comb. If I'm going to a show, the day-to-day -day conditioner might be a little too conditioning. If the ears tend to be greasy at all for shows, I would use clean start and after you bathe conditioner. Audrey, yes, it's called Sheltie 101. I used to own, well, she passed away, the all-time top winning best in show Sheltie in North America. And I do have a course called Sheltie 101 and I would be happy for you to join us on Leading Edge Dog Show Academy. And as well, I'm always there to support you. So if you have any questions other than what is covered in the course, send me an email. Barbara says, thanks. Thanks for joining us, Barbara. Stephanie says, uh, Stephanie, so for Aussie, Artisan shears instead of the classic thinners and blenders. If you can get the classic, I like the classic. People say they're a beginning set of shears, but I love them. So either one that they have, I mean, I think it's just a great time to get 10% off of them. Uh, Gretchen, recommendations for slicker comb and scissors for an extremely dense cottony carry blue terrier coat. So you definitely need the big G, you definitely need the um, poodle comb. Um, I would also use shine for sure when I'm brushing it out to really break apart that. I showed the old time top winning Carrie Blue Terrier. I have a Carrie Blue Terrier grooming course in my school. Um, scissors. So 
I really like blenders. I basically only used blenders on my entire carry because you get the Marcel in the back and you get the legs looking perfect. I think in the course, I actually use the classic set of shears in the course. Uh, one more question. You recommend the artisan blender for the Havanese. Would that be the chunky blender or the six and a half double-sided? It'd be the six and a half double-sided. Charlotte, what scissors do you recommend for feet of an English Springer Spaniel? So you need straight shears for the edges and the bottoms. And then um, the artisan 6.5 thinner is what I would use because you can use them everywhere else on your Springer. You can get the fives if that's going to make you more comfortable, but I would use the 6.5 because I like a bit of a longer thinner. Stephanie, what would you use for sunburnt black hair? I'm going to use ice on ice ready to use because it has sunblock. So it's, that's for additional um, uh, protection against the sun and black on black shampoo. And you're going to use the black on black like this. You're going to use the black on black straight on dry hair and leave it on for 10 minutes. Then you're going to lather it in. Then you're going to shampoo them again. Then you're going to condition with after you bathe to seal that color in there. Um, you, and you don't have to worry about getting the black and black in the whites of your Springer because it'll work. Oh, you didn't say Springer. Anyway, somehow I read Springer. I must be getting tired. All right. Lori says, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Tanya says, thank you. Thank you for joining us. Deb says, I have a Bichon who has lots of hair in the ears. Is there anything other than pulling out those hairs, she has a strong tendency towards ear infections and eye tearing. Any suggestions? Yes. Okay. Great question, Deb. So I have poodles. You have to pluck their ears, right? So I use the R7 um, ear powder that Cherry Brook has. And I just pull out a little bit of hair. So what I would do is she's very sensitive. The thing about plucking ears is that if they have sensitive ears, it can make them more sensitive and they can give them an infection. But if their ears are full of hair and they get ear infections, you can't get the medication. So I would like gently pull the hair like straight out of the ear canal, like as much as possible, and then use my scissors. I would use curved shears because it's going to point away from the ear and cut the hair as short as possible. Because as soon as the ears go down, it mashes all the longer hair like into the ear canal. So if you pull it, you know, you're just pulling it. Gent so you're basically just pulling the hair up like this, right? You're not pulling it out. You're just pulling it up and then cutting it as close to the ear canal as you possibly can. I hope you're looking at my crazy hair while I'm doing this because I'm doing this just for you, I'll have you know. So you're going to cut it as close to the ear canal as you can. Then if you could put a little bit of R7 ear powder in there and just gently pull out a few hairs even once or twice a week just so that you're getting some in there. For the eye and the tear staining, if you have not used Peace and Kindness spray for the tear staining, it is amazing. And here is Betty Bichon who is a model dog. So I have a Bichon grooming course, but when she gets a, an eye, well, she doesn't get an eye infection, but if she did get an eye infection, my peace and kindness, I think is in my bathroom because I use it for me too. But what I, okay, I'm going to stop sharing or somebody's going to yell at me because they couldn't see it. Um, so here's Betty Bichon, right? So let's pretend she has an eye infection and I'm going to take my peace and kindness spray and I'm not going to hold it right here, but I'm going to hold it like six to eight inches away. I'm just going to go mist, 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 mist. And the natural colloidal silver of peace and kindness just really helps clean up those ear infections. And it's easy to use. Um, you're not like pulling their eye and like getting the drops in there all the time. I'm not a veterinarian. So, you know, I would, if you want to talk to your veterinarian about that, I would recommend that. But it has really, really worked for me on my poodles cleaning up um, eye infections. Linda says, can you get more than one of those specials on one purchase? I think so, Linda. And if not, I'd call them and see what they can do for you. Let them like ask, ask. I, I guess I should have asked before I did the webinar, but ask. It's worth a try. Candace says, sorry, I missed everything. <laughs> Me too. Uh, teaching virtual blah, 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 blah. Combs and brushes for my Sheltie puppy, please. So Candace, we do have at leadingedgedogshowacademy.com a full on Sheltie grooming course, but my go-to brushes for a Sheltie um, would be the big G in medium, the breezy brush, um, medium pad. So that is the green pad in either the oblong or oval 22 millimeter. And my comb would be the poodle comb. Do, do, do. Samsung Galaxy S8 Active, quite the name. What brush for short Norwich legs for fluffing? Um, I would use the Baby Big G to make them big and fluffy. Diane says, what chunker and thinner do you suggest for clipping a Pomeranian for show? Um, I would use the Artisan 
thinning shear because you want them to look perfect. Um, I would not use a chunker on a Pomeranian, but make sure they're completely combed out with that Jill comb. The chunker is not going to give the finish that you want on that um, Pomeranian coat. Sorry, I had a little mind blank there. Carol, is the classic scissor set beveled? Oh, good question, Carol. You were paying attention earlier. It is a hybrid shear. So that is why they're awesome, I think. They're a little bit tougher than a convex, but a little bit better of a finish than a beveled. So it's called a hybrid blade. We didn't even cover those today. So that was a really good question. You were playing along. Audrey says, thanks for all the information. Hey, Audrey, thanks for saying so. Uh, oh, forgot to look at your name first. Okay, I'm going to stop now because it is 3.30 and we were supposed to stop at 3. Um, but I'm going to get through this little page that I'm at. Uh, Julie says, I have a Chris C pin brush and the pins are beginning to sink. It's a wooden brush number 35. Is there anything to do about it or do I have to replace it? Okay, so the wooden brush, they have a special tool for pulling those pins out. So please uh, take a photo of the brush and email it to Chris Christensen and ask them. Usually what happens is that we have the tool at the events and we just pull those pins out for you. We can also replace missing teeth in the wooden pin brush. So ask them what they might do in the meantime. If not, send me that same question at answers at chrissystems.com and I'll make sure it goes to the right person. So that's answers at chrissystems.com. So I'm Allison at leadingedgedogshowacademy.com. You could send it there as well, but that's my official Chris Christensen email. Deb, thanks to you and I do as well. Julie, do you use peace and kindness differently for eye staining than for eye infections? Um, uh, I don't, I guess for eye infections, I go to the vet. That's what I'm going to say. But once the medication is done from the vet, I follow up with peace and kindness. Hakari says, thanks for so many tips. Thanks, Hakari. Julie says, love your webinars. I love you too. Uh, okay, I said I was going to stop. I better stop. I'm going to do this last one. I have a Papillon with long silky coat, been using CC small pin brush for years, and I love it. Do I recommend, oh, oh, oh sorry, I screwed that up. Um, do you have a comb recommendation? The Jill, how, how do you measure from length of scissors? We went over that earlier. You measure not the finger rest, but from the, um, the round, the finger hole, the end of the finger hole. So the outer edge to outer edge, not including the finger rest. Okay, this was supposed to be a one hour webinar and we are 91 minutes in, but it's only because I love you so much and I'm so pleased that you joined us. So little recap. Cherry Brook, aren't they amazing? Free webinars, you got me for an hour and a half from Cherry Brook for free, right to customer service. Tell them you loved it, tell them you wanna see more. Here we go, look at their promotions. Buy the big G, get shampoo and conditioner for free. Who doesn't like that or the big K? And that's any size of those, doesn't have to be the big one. Um, spend $75, get a free brush cleaning kit, which is the magic foam and the brush cleaning brush, or uh, any shears, all the shears, buy as many as you want, buy some for your friends, use the code CC shears with an S at the end, 10, 10% off all the shears. That's some cha-ching for you people. All right. Again, I am Allison. I am from Leading Edge Dog Show Academy, which is the world's foremost learning experience for show dogs online. We have amazing webinars. We have one sponsored by Cherry Book. We have ones that I do myself on specific topics where not only can you ask a question, but I'm gonna answer it in a slide for you. So I'm gonna create a slide with your question, your answer, sometimes a demo, sometimes a diagram, sometimes a product list. Check us out. Our next one is October 22nd. Um, I have courses on grooming for Asian Fusion, Carrie Blue Terriers, Newfie, Setter, Spaniels, Shelties, uh, World Famous Poodle University. I have handling classes, training classes, or you can get all of that plus all of our webinars for free by joining the Winner's Circle Full School subscription. All right. The world is a little bit of a crazy place right now, right? It is. And I am so very grateful that you decided to spend this one hour, which ended up being an hour and a half, but hey, I like to provide all the information I can for you. Um, and so thank you so much for joining me. It means a lot. So to everyone out there, please stay safe. And I hope to see you soon on another webinar. Have a great night.